Well, hey guys, I'm just washing my hands and I shared these with you recently, but these are those little nail cleaners. I just wash and reuse them, but I love to clean under my nails with these things. It's like so satisfying. <laughs> um, anyway, don't underestimate the power of good hand hygiene for keeping the cold and flu stuff away. Is the season for that nonsense. And man, knock on wood, I don't wanna jinx myself, but I have not gotten sick in like 10 years. But with hand washing, you know, you really can cut down significantly on the transmission of those little viruses. And you don't need an antibac antibacterial hand wash to do that. Antibacterial hand washes, all they do is disrupt your skin's natural microbiome. And then they don't, they don't clean your hands any better. And also, they contribute to emergence of antibiotic resistance. So just get, honestly, I've just been washing my hands with this. CeraVe filming oil cleanser for the face, face wash. Doesn't even, does it even market itself as a face wash? Hydrating foaming oil cleanser for dry to very dry skin. Aside from the mention of avoiding direct contact with eyes, there's no other mention or suggestion of face wash. For all we know, this could be, this could be an ear wash. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I've been using it as a hand wash. It works really well in that regard. That is one thing I wish the general public grasped to at large is that antibiotics do not treat viruses. They don't, I mean, they treat bacteria, but colds and flus are caused by viruses. And the reason that's important is because a lot of people will get a cold, a flu, a viral upper, upper respiratory tract infection, and they will go to the doctor expecting antibiotics. There is obviously strep throat, that's a bacteria that requires antibiotics. But if the strep is negative, the doctor says, oh, okay, just, you know, fluids, rest, and the like. Patients sometimes get mad um, that they're not getting antibiotics, but the antibiotics are not indicated because you don't have a bacterial infection and they don't, you know, they disrupt your gut microbiome, expose you to unnecessary risk, and then put antibiotics out there in the environment contributing to emergence of resistant microbes. One thing about antibiotics I will say is they're anti-inflammatory, you know, they have anti-inflammatory properties, so they do make you feel better but they're not good in the long run if they're not indicated. For example, like antibiotics are used to treat acne because of their anti-inflammatory properties, um, mostly. But we don't like to keep people on them long term because again, there is that risk of emergence of resistant microorganisms. And also, as it disrupts your skin's microflora, rarely, I mean, this is pretty rare, you can develop an acne-like eruption that is totally different from acne on top of your already acne called gram-negative folliculitis. It's caused by gram-negative bacteria that, you know, take, take up shop, you know, to kind of take over because you've been on antibiotics and your natural skin microflora is disrupted. You've been on prolonged, prolonged courses. So yeah, I mean, antibiotics need to be executed with precision, right time, right place, right duration, right dose, right antibiotic, Throwing in antibiotics, whether it be antibiotics you take by mouth that you get with a prescription, or antibiotics that you buy over the counter and rub on your skin in the form of Neosporin, which as a side note, doesn't do anything. Um, antibiotic hand washes with benzalkonium chloride. Not, not washing your hand, and not making your hands any more hygienic. That includes too, even if you handle food, raw food, obviously there's bacteria there, but still, the anti the antibacterial, the antimicrobial aspect, it is not it is not doing what you think it's doing. Um, hand hygiene is all about it's all about the friction. Got my little toasties. Time for a little hydration station. So antibiotics, you know, they are they are necessary in many situations. They're really useful, important. But the problem when you use them unnecessarily or for prolonged courses is that when you do actually really need them, well, then you have bugs that are like, <laughs> I got you, I've developed resistance and you can't treat them. It's really a problem in the hospital 
um, for, you know, pneumonias and things of that sort. All right, let's come on over with the e.l.f. Whoa, glow. Reminds me, wasn't that, wasn't there some guy in that show Blossom back in the 80s, 90s, who would always come in and go, whoa. Is his name Joey? I feel like that's, if I remember correctly, that was his name. I think of that whenever I put this on. So I went ahead and did my makeup and I've been trying out some of the makeup products that came in the Korean advent calendar. So on my lips, I have that Para Para uh, lip tint and lip liner. Really like it, it stays on really well. So fun times playing around with the K-Beauty. Makeup brush cleaning time. Absolutely love this concealer brush, uh, the A506. Angie Hot and Flashy, so good. Ah, oh, here at the library. Ooh, embroidery. This is something I always admire, but honestly I have no interest in getting into. Oh, that's cute, kind of looks like Pippi Longstocking. All right, library success. They had Demon Copperhead by Barbara King Solver. I've been wanting to read this and they got it in, so I snagged that. I love Barbara King Solver. Like the Bean Trees was one of my favorites. Haven't read it in a long time. I don't usually reread books. Do you? Let me know in the comments. Um, and I love Poisonwood Bible. So that looks like it's gonna be likewise good. Um, I'm not sure when it came out, but recently I read a little mystery book. It was a teddy bear themed mystery. Kind of cute in the long run. Uh, but I, I look forward to reading this. I'm still listening. As a matter of fact, it's probably gonna interrupt us here now. Film and access yep, to a dark room in which to process it. Uh, You've been taught how to properly I'm develop film by Doc. Still listening to Wellness, which I'm really enjoying, by Nathan Hill. I'm listening to that on Audible. It takes me a while to make it through an audiobook because I only, you know, have little snippets here and there of time to listen to audiobooks. But, uh, yeah, I tried for a while listening to audiobooks before going to bed because I like to read before bed. But the problem is, at least with a book, as you're falling asleep, the book will conk you in the head and you're like, okay, time for me to go to sleep. But with an audiobook, you just drift off to sleep and then you, you've slept through a portion of the book and you're like, whoa, what happened? So I don't do that much anymore. But uh, yeah, I like to read before bed and it's a good way actually to help yourself unwind is to read a good old fashioned book. Just the movement of your eyes back and forth can lull you to sleep. And then the material usually helps you forget about whatever you were worried about, provided it's not some stressful topic. So I'm here in Home Goods and they have all of the Christmas stuff on clearance and they have this adorable snowman stress ball. Looks like someone tried to crack into the box already, but I wanted to say these are really good if you struggle with picking your skin or like biting your nails or pulling at your hair. It can really help to squeeze on one of these to help cut that urge down. Oh my gosh, how cute is this? Little tree mug, Godiva, comes with a little little milk chocolate, but that mug is so sweet. Seven dollars, that's not too bad. This is a good time to snag holiday decor. What is this? Ooh, a Christmas tree shower curtain. That looks like it would get mildew e very fast. I like these pillows though. They look nice on my chairs 19 bucks it's not too bad they're already putting the valentine stuff out those love bunnies oh my goodness how adorable is that it's a really nice mug these are like cake stands but i was just looking at them and i thought it would be pretty to put jewelry on just like that the pink 
So the other thing when it comes to cutting down on colds and flus is you've got to prioritize sleep. I mean, it's hard. It's, that, that's like something that's easier said than done because sleep is, it's gotten increasingly difficult to get a good night's sleep. With all the distractions we have, all of the obligations, that's like when your body heals, recovers. I think our society as a whole, it just, we don't place enough value on restorative sleep. So I swung into Walgreens and picked up a th few things I'll show you. Um, this cleanser I used throughout 2023 and really liked by Rock, their Barrier Renew Gel to Foam Cleanser. And I'm going to do a video of my favorite cleansers from 2023. And I wanted to include this, but since I finished it, um, I wanted to get a new one so I could show you guys and have some footage for that video of what it looks like. Um, plus, I just really enjoyed it. It has ceramides in it. And it also has uh, green tea, which may offer some antioxidants to cut down on oxidative stress in the skin. And it's just a very mild, nice cleanser. I was really impressed with this. Gel to foam, fragrance free. So I've got another one of those. Then I was cyanine Carmex because Carmex is notorious for causing irritant lip dermatitis, like dry cracked lips, because it has like camphor, salicylic acid, menthol. It's actually got stuff in it that it can be pretty irritating to the lips, but also at the same time, those ingredients feel soothing. Like it has phenol in it, feels really calming and soothing, but it's actually pretty irritating. So you put the Carmex on, everything feels great. It's soft, smooth, just feels good. But then a little while later, the lips become super irritated. So you reach for, reach for more Carmex, the cycle repeats itself. But I saw they actually have an SPF lip balm that does not have camphor or salicylic acid. It does have flavor, which is a common irritant slash allergen in lip care products but other than that it looked pretty good it's an organic aka chemical sunscreen you get two tubes what did i pay i paid walgreens price so you know that was that was an upcharge right there mm, 6.29 definitely not definitely not as affordable as the banana boat one and the banana boat one i like so much is spf 50 but I have to give it a try because how will we know if it's any good or not fully without me trying it and letting you guys know down the, down the road. It is water resistant, which I think is good for an SPF lip balm. Is it just me though? Like SPF lip balms are kind of becoming increasingly hard to find, difficult to find. Like this past season, I mostly used uh, a sunscreen stick on my lips, which worked out really well, but bought this and then I needed a new toothpaste, I mean, new toothpaste. I needed a new toothbrush. Um, and so I got this Oral-B pulsating one for the pulsatile effect of plaque removal. Comes with a battery, microban. Uh, so yeah. So I was pulling some things out, thinking about what I'm going to set out once I take down my Christmas decorations. I wanted to share with you guys some things here. This I've had for a while. It came in a FabFitFun box, and I just have this sweet cross-stitch um, pillow. It says, squeeze the day. I've had these for a while now. I just think they're so pretty. I found them. They were, you know, sometimes people leave stuff for anyone to take in our mail room and someone just had left these and I was like, they're way too pretty to just ignore. It's a really well-known brand too. Havland, France. I know I'm saying that wrong. Um, those little bowls and then this little set of strawberry plates is um, that brand. <laughs> uh, so I know these are really nice. Anyway, um, pulled those out. But I also got for a Christmas gift um, this nice set of candles I'm really excited about. Apothic. These are really fancy. Look how many candles came in the set. Um, so I'll have these for 
a while. Y'all know I love my candles. Mmm, that one's really nice. White vetiver. Isn't this a nice gift though? Um, I thought the box was super pretty too. I'll probably leave the box out all year. Then I also got a gift that was given to me in this Kate Spade box, which um, I thought was pretty. And inside is, isn't that pretty? So I'll have to figure out something to wear that with because it's just so pretty. And I love the box too. Then I also got this pretty keychain from Westminster Abbey, the coronation. There's the crown and Westminster Abbey. It's not pretty. It came in a little and it came in a little sachet. Okay, and then I also got something that at first I strongly side-eyed. I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I'm sure you can make something like this, but what is it? Okay, it's called Box Ballin'. I don't know, these things sometimes come up as like Instagram ads. I think you can get them on Amazon. But it's actually a ton of fun. Um, it's a little silly looking. Okay, basically it's a ball on a string and you can adjust the length of the string just by wrapping Just by wrapping the ball around the headband. So I have it set so that the ball when I put this on my head <laughs> The ball hits right about at my waist. The point of it is to like work on your hand-eye coordination um, it's it's Harder than it looks, but once you get a rhythm going, it's kind of it's kind of hard to stop. It's a great distraction, but it's also a great thing to do to give your eyes a break from the computer. Like if you go on YouTube, there are videos of people doing it and they're going like really fast. Um, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's fun. <laughs> and it comes with an app and you can go on the TV and you can compete with like other people, but I just do it myself here standing out and go on the app. Like I think there's even an ad with the Kardashians promoting this, so take it with a grain of salt, but I've gotta say it's a lot of fun. Like I've been playing with this a ton. It's kinda like, what are those toys that's like a paddle with a ball attached to it? It's kinda like that, but combined with boxing and for I don't know what it is but if there's if music is playing or if I sing a little song I get much better at it somehow that really helps like you can't hit it too hard otherwise it'll ricochet too much but if you get a little if you get a little waist action in there it's a lot of fun I'm telling you like I when I first got it, I side-eyed it. I was like, this is basically a ball on a string attached to a headband, what? But it's a lot of fun. I thought, you know, if, you, if you're like me and you don't really care what people think, <laughs> watch me do this. This would be a fun thing to take with you if you have to go on a plane, you know, and you have to wait in the airport. You have a layover or something. You could just pull this out and Cause that wouldn't look weird, but it's really entertaining. Like you'd be surprised how the time flies. This is way better for you than going on your phone and scrolling on random social media apps because it's like a little mind, body, eye, hand coordination exercise. Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower and um, I'm filming this on a Saturday night. You guys are watching it the Saturday before New Year's Eve. So uh, I was doing some wrapping uh, and actually, all right, backstory, because you know I can't just come on here and tell you something and be like, bye, I've got to give you a backstory. So backstory, I developed this habit uh a few christmases ago where starting in november i told myself i'm gonna get you know i start in november i get early november i get all of my christmas presents ordered they come you know you guys know i put on my tree at least in november 
And then I make it a habit. As soon as I get them, I start every night, I wrap one gift. It makes it so much easier when you get down to the wire, you don't have all this wrapping to do. Just make a little time to do a little wrapping. I know you guys are like, this is way after the fact for us. But I'm telling you, it really uh, cuts down on the holiday stress because I, sometimes, you know, in the past, I used to put that off, put off wrapping to the last minute and be like, oh my gosh, I have all these presents to wrap. And you'd be like kind of stressed out about it. It wasn't enjoyable. It's much more enjoyable, at least for me, to do a little bit every night. So I was wrapping up the last of my gifts and what I like to do is listen to my audiobook. And I have been kind of, um, slacking a bit on the audiobook I was listening to. I haven't been listening to it as much, but I picked back up with it. I'm still listening to Wellness. The one of the main the main character, the woman, who if you remember I said I, I didn't really relate to her much, but um as the book is going along, I like kind of see why she is the way she is as you get more of her backstory. But um there's this part where she's met these people um that are like uber into that law of attraction stuff. And she's kind of like, they're, they're telling her all this stuff about like, just keep saying that X, Y, and Z and all come true. And she's like, have you all lost the plot? Like, what are you talking about? And this one person is like, um, yeah, um, I was divorced and my wife came back to me and this other person is like, I had diabetes and it's cured and she's like, really? And as things go along, <laughs> come to find out, like the guy's wife still lives with her new fiance and he just doesn't want to accept that. So he just keeps saying that they're no longer divorced. And the woman's diabetes is not cured, but she keeps telling her doctor, stop telling me I have diabetes. I don't. It's like, oh, this is a thing though. Like, and it's, it's a real big thing in online. You know, you come across people who have these harebrained ideas about things. And it's, it's like, when you get into the nitty gritty, you're like, you have lost the plot, man. You have completely lost the plot. Um, and and it, it preys on vulnerable people who are looking for something. You know, it's kind of, this book is almost, a, you feel like, is this a bit satirical, but it also feels like very realistic. Um, you know, like that's kind of an extreme example, but you stumble upon these communities, you know, these ringleaders, so to speak, and they really can rope in vulnerable people. And it's not just in social media. I mean, this kind of thing happens outside of the internet all the time too. Like. Um, people will get roped into, you know, get rich, get rich, get rich quick schemes. And um, it trickles too into definitely like with skincare, um, not so much, um, you know, I guess to a certain extent skincare, but really where, where it pops up a lot is hair loss because hair loss is, is very emotionally devastating. Um, and so there are a lot of hair loss, um, you know, manifest hair growth kind of things out there that people online are doing and swearing by. And you're just like, A, that's not, it doesn't work. B, you know, you're putting yourself at risk. C, I, I, I mean, like, just stop. Who remembers Miss Cleo? As a side note, I think it was last year at this time. I watched a, I think I watched, was it a documentary on Netflix? Netflix or Amazon Prime, all about Miss Cleo. Wow. Um, and it was eye-opening. Uh, I, I, you know, she was one where it was like, do people honestly believe this woman? But watching the documentary, you know, hopefully it was, was accurate. Um, it really showed you that there was more to Miss Cleo than you even could ever imagine. Uh, I, I forget what it's called, Miss Cleo. I don't know. Anyway, y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. You're having a great weekend. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.